Hi everyone, greetings and welcome to yet another training session in the series of basic tutorials in Eurofly 3. Today I'm going to show you the navigation and navigation systems for the planes in Eurofly 3. I'll be demonstrating two systems because there are two kinds of navigation systems in the planes. So let's do a practice flight again. Training dialogue. Practice flights combo Lights. box. Mooney M20 Cessna. Choose the Cessna C152. Airport selection dialogue. Select and, and let me filter edit. choose A. my favorite Sel airport. Czech, Re Czech, Re Czech Republic remove. Czech Republic Prague slash Letnany. LKLT. Total com dashboard window. First, I'm going to show you this simple navigation system that the category one planes have. And that is only uh, essentially where you can uh, set your flight destination. You can add that destination into your navigation and it'll then tell you where it is, in which direction from you, and how far away from you it is. So let's add a destination into the navigation right now. We can either press F8 or Control F8 or Control Shift F8. All these keys bring up the same list of all the available airports. The only difference is in the way that list is ordered. I need to turn on the computer first. Computer on. So if I now press Control F8, combo box. I can see the list, and obviously, Czech Republic, Prague slash Lit the Prague Litany Airport, the one where I'm currently at, is also the one currently focused because it's the closest to me because I'm right here. So that's why it's first in the list. If filter I edit. press the Tab key now, I'm in the filter field where I could uh, narrow down my search for combo an airport. England Derby, EGBD. So let's choose this one, for example, England Derby. If I now press space on this airport, destination set, dashboard window, it's going to set the airport as my destination. It's going to add that to my navigation. And you are also going to see that the list of airports has immediately closed because we can only have one specific destination set at one time. Now, if I press the N key, 69 left at 291. It's going to tell me that it's 69 degrees left of my current position at course 291. If I check my current course with S, north, uh, I find out that I'm currently facing due north. So in order to reach the Derby airport, I would need to turn to 69 left at 291. 291 degrees if I took off now. When I press Control N, it's going to tell me the distance to the airport from my current position and how long it's going to take me to get there. 1,159 kilometers, Derby, 1 hours, 21 minutes. 1,121 kilometers and um, 1 hour and 21 minutes. This is what the navigation for Category 1 planes can do for you. It can tell you the direction of the airport with N or the distance and the estimated travel time or arrival time with Control N. And if I press Control Shift N, destination deleted. I can uh, quickly delete the destination from my navigation system in this way. So this is the simple kind of navigation. This is really all that it can do. We could also turn on audio navigation with Alt N. Oh, it's not going to turn on now because Combo. I removed Fil the airport from. Mm, I unset the destination. So let me. Combo box, England Derby. Quickly put it back. Destination. Now if I press Alt N to turn on the audio navigation. Audio navigation on. We would immediately start hearing the continuous tone representing the position and the current direction of the destination airport in relation to our current position. If we took off, the audio navigation can only play this seeping tone representing the airport's position if the destination is up to 90 degrees either to our left or right. But like I said, if we did take off and started turning to the left, we would start hearing the signal, the tone gradually appearing on our left and uh, starting to get ever closer towards the center. So even using the audio navigation alone, we can uh, roughly orient ourselves in the correct direction. Once we start hearing the navigation tone dead ahead, we know that we are flying roughly in the correct direction to reach the destination. So that's the first simple navigation system for Category 1 planes, but let's now introduce the more sophisticated one, which offers us more possibilities. 
For that, I will need train. to go to the free flights. Chuck is free. World free. Free f- f- rental offer. And England, Birmingham. Eng- England, Doncaster. Eng- Le- England, London, Gatwick. England, London, Heathrow. Le- uh, rent, um... Plane, rent a any plane. Button, pre- plane selection, airspeed, Beechcraft, Airbus A380. Let's uh, pick up the Airbus A380 for this. Europe, you, dashboard window. It's also going to tell us during flight when pressing the N and Control N keys where in relation to us and how far away from us the destination is. But here on these larger planes, we can already add multiple waypoints into the navigation at once. So I'll need to uh, start the computer for this, first of all. So if I now press Control Shift B for battery uh, to turn on the power supply and Control Shift K to turn on the onboard computer. Computer on. We can now press tab once the computer is on navigation window root combo box collapsed and we have moved to another panel which is called navigation and it said there is the root combo box and this is a list actually where we could start adding even multiple waypoints at once so if i now press control f8 to bring up the airport list ordered by distance again combo boxing this time It's not going to close when I press space on an airport for the first time because we can add multiple airports into the navigation at the same time. England, London, Gatwick, EGTK, 40 kilometers. Let's add Gatwick first. Added to navigation. England, London, slash Stansted, EG, England, Birmingham, EGBB, 141. Let's say I'm going to add Birmingham. Added to navigation. Belgium, Ostend, slash Bruges, EBOS, 200. Belgium. Added to navigation. England, Manchester, EGCC. And Manchester. Added to navigation. So we should have four points in our waypoints list now. Uh, if I now press escape to close the airport list. Through combo box London, Gatwick, 40 kilometers, 119 left, two minutes, collapsed. We, we can see the route, all the waypoints in the order that we added them. Birmingham, 181 kilometers, 173 right, 11 minutes. Ostend slash Bruges, 347 kilometers, 148 right, 22 minutes. Manchester, 425 kilometers, 166 left, 26 minutes. And all the way down at the bottom of this list. Total distance, 993 kilometers, 1 hours, 10 minutes. There's the total distance it would take us to fly this route with this airplane. Total it's distance, 993 kilometers, 9 1 hours, 10 minutes. and 93 kilometers, and it would take us 1 hour and 10 minutes to fly uh, across this entire route. Waypoint by waypoint. Now, uh, the individual waypoints also tell us um, which way the route is going to lead. Birmingham, London. So, London, Gatwick, 40 kilometers, 119 left, two minutes. Gatwick is 40 kilometers away and 100 and Birmingham, 119 Gatwick, degrees. 119 left, two minutes. To the left, uh, meaning from our current position, from where we're currently standing at the Heathrow Airport. Next, Birmingham, 181 kilometers, 173 right, 11 minutes. Birmingham would be 181 kilometers and 173 degrees off to the right, but this time it means from the Gatwick Airport. Once we get there, once we're flying over Gatwick, um, we would then need to turn 173 degrees back to the right in order to be able to reach Birmingham. So the position information is relative for each respective waypoint in the navigation. The information for the next waypoint is always in relation to the previous waypoint once we have passed it. Navigation window. So this is roughly what our current route would look like. Um, It's not a very clean and meaningful route, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Now we can also move the individual waypoints either up or down in the list. Birmingham, London, Gatwick. So let's say that I want to fly to Birmingham first. Birmingham. Uh, I focus it and if I press F2, I move it up in the list. So above Gatwick. Birmingham, 141 kilometers, 51 right, 8 minutes. Now it's the first point in the waypoint in the route list. You see, I'm pressing the apparel and there's nothing above Birmingham. London, Gatwick, and 181 Gatwick kilometers, 178 left, 11 minutes. Below. If I wanted to um, Birmingham. move Birmingham back down, I can just uh, focus it again and press F3. London, Gatwick. And now Gatwick is um, 
going to be all the way up as the first item in the list. Birmingham, 180, Austin slash Bruges, 300, Manchester, 4, Manchester. And all the information is then updated in real time. The route is recalculated every time you move a waypoint up or down. Also, if I now change my mind and decide I would like to remove uh, Manchester, Austin slash Bruges, the Austin uh, airport, Belgium, so that we are only uh, flying over airports that are actually located in England in our route. I can just press the delete key on either of these waypoints. Removed from navigation. Removed from navigation. And now we can only see London, here. Gatwick, 40 kilometers, 190. 40 kilometers. Birmingham, 181 kilometers. Birmingham, 181 kilometers. Manchester, 106 in Manchester, kilometers. Manchester, 106 Manchester, kilometers. 106 kilometers, 17 right, 6 minutes. And uh, the total, di total distance has now also changed and it's become much shorter. Total distance, 328 kilometers, 23 minutes. This is starting to look like a much better route to fly. So I can press F2 and F3 respectively to change the order of the waypoints in the route and delete to remove a particular waypoint from my navigation system from the route. But I can also save the current route. Meaning, if I press Control S, saved. This route has now been saved into my user's data folder in the subfolder, which is currently called My Ways at the time of recording this uh, tutorial. So that means that if we are using the installed version of Eurofly and we decide to remove the whole program folder, we are not going to lose the routes that we have saved before. This will also allow the community to share their favorite routes just by sending them to each other. Uh, it means that if I like uh, to fly from, say, from Heathrow to Birmingham often, I don't always have to manually add the individual waypoints into the navigation system every single time I get in the cockpit and decide to make this flight. I can just reuse my saved route. The F1 key toggles between the route view and the individual waypoints view. Save routes combo box London, Heathrow London, Gatwick Birmingham Manchester collapsed. So now we were in the waypoints view. I pressed F1 and we are now in the saved routes view. We can see just this single route here. We could also delete it from here in the same way that we deleted the individual waypoints. And the display of the routes, of the saved routes, is also filtered contextually. Meaning that, for example, if I was in Manchester right now and not at Heathrow, I wouldn't see this route in the list at all, and I wouldn't be able to select it. Because obviously you can't start your flight on a route if you're currently not located in its starting point. Now if I press F1 again... Route combo box London, Gatwick, 40 kilometers, 119 left. I'm in the view of the individual waypoints that have been added into this one particular route. And I could edit them on the fly and add or remove Birmingham, Manchester. some more Total distance, 328 kilometers, as I wish. So I could Birmingham, Lund delete all removed. the waypoints in here. Removed from navigation. Removed from navigation. Right now. And the navigation is currently empty. There are no waypoints in the current route, but if I press F1 again... Saved routes combo box London, Heathrow London, Gatwick Birmingham Manchester collapsed. I'm back in the list of my saved routes. I can still see my route here. And if I press enter on it... Route combo box London, Gatwick, 40 kilometers, 119... I'm left. switched back to the waypoints view. Birmingham, Manchester, total distance, 328... And I can again see all the individual waypoints one after another for the route that I have saved. Save routes combo box London. And I can also remove the route in here. Route removal confirmation dialog. Do you really want to remove the route London? Heathrow London, Gatwick Birmingham Manchester. By pressing delete and confirming the removal with the yes button in the dialog that just popped up. Navigation window. Save routes combo box collapsed. And my saved routes are now empty as well. But there's one more important thing to mention in context of navigation, and that is that navigation doesn't always mean just moving from point A to point B while referring exclusively to the airports as such. The aviatics industry works uh, in such a way where, except for the airports, 
which are actually used pretty seldom for direct navigation, we actually work with so-called checkpoints or flyover points. They're used to provide useful navigational instructions and aids to the pilots, even though as such they're not very significant in other contexts, but they're usually only used just for the aviatic transportation. We also have a list of such uh, checkpoints or flyover points in Eurofly 3. If we bring up the list of all the available airports with Control F8 again, Combo Box England London, Heathrow, EGLL, zero. I press Shift Tab to get back to the dashboard first, and then Control F8. Here we can see the individual airports we've been here before. Filter Edit Blank. Now if I press Tab, we see the Filter Edit field, and if I press Tab one more time, Combo Box Nebraska, 51000 Danehill, 61 kilometers, 121 left, 40 minutes, collapsed. We can see kind of a seemingly strange list here. NW51000 Danehill, 61 kilometers, 121 left, 40 minutes. NW fifty one thousand and one prevent sixty five kilometers fifty four left forty three minutes NW any end up any end up end 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 up end up with these approximately fifteen twelve or fifteen flyover checkpoints they're marked or labeled with letters and numeric codes and these are the aviatic flyover points which may or may not be part of our uh, specific route. We can also see where each of these points is located so that we have an idea. NE 51,000 Danehill, 61 kilometers, 121 left, 40 minutes. NW 51,000 Danehill, NW 51,000 and one prevent, 60. So we can see that the first two ones are in Danehill, the uh, third one is in prevent, NW 51,000 and one prevent, 60, etc. These are all of the flyover waypoints that are located in uh, England. If we currently were in, uh, say, Germany, then we would see the flyover points for Germany here, or if we were in Austria, we would see the points for Austria and so on. And I'm mentioning this here because aviatic transportation occurs in predetermined flight corridors. We'll see later on when creating our flight plan that it may happen that the air traffic control or you know the approach control is going to assign us a flight corridor consisting of these flyover waypoints that we will need to fly through in order to reach our destination and the route into our destination doesn't have to consist only of airports as such but it can also consist of or include these flyover waypoints in Eurofly 3, we are using even airports for navigation just to enable people to get a bit more of a geographical idea about the locations that they're just flying over. We may be instructed to follow one of these uh, checkpoints, especially when flying over remote or scarcely populated areas. So we as pilots have to be aware of this uh, possibility for that reason. In real life, it's mainly these flyover waypoints that are actually being used. So if we were about to fly from, say, London to Berlin, our superiors may prepare us a route where we would be flying mainly over airports. Uh, so, so let's say, for instance, I have no idea about geography. Uh, we would be flying to Vienna and to uh, Salzburg in Austria and only then to Berlin for example but it wouldn't be like this in real life in real life the pilot would receive a list of these flyover waypoints to well yeah to fly over <laughs> uh, so that's why uh, it can also happen to us in Eurofly that we will be assigned a flyover point and we need to know about them in that case we can access them by bringing up the airport list like we did, for instance, with Control F8 and pressing the tab key twice. And we can then add these flyover points into our navigation. So we can also add these flyover points into the navigation just like we can do with any other waypoint. Added to navigation. And in that case, we would then be able to fly to reach that flyover point using the navigation tools that are available to us. During the actual flight, we can use the N and Control N keys to read the information about the direction and distance of our current destination. 
we can also use the audio navigation toggled with Alt N to be guided um, to the destination using audible beeps. And if the plane also has auto navigation, which category two and three planes do, we can make use of that feature too with Alt P for pilot. And in that case, the plane will then follow the waypoints in our route and will always turn uh, to face them automatically. For this kind of navigation for the larger planes where we usually have multiple waypoints in a route at once, the plane would always follow the one which is the first, which is at the top at the beginning of the route, and then after having reached it, that first point would then disappear from our navigation and the plane would move on to follow the next waypoint that we have added to the route in order. And since we're already talking about the different possible kinds of navigation, let's also mention the third available uh, way of navigation. And uh, these are waypoints that guide us directly to the landing runway at an airport to land on. Because at the larger airports, there are various runways. And in Eurofly 3, we have to land exactly on that runway in that case. So we have to be aligned exactly our direction, our course has to match the exact position of the runway. And this can be quite difficult for some pilots to do, to reach the airport exactly at the given direction that is required for the given runway. And that's why we can also add these specific waypoints into our navigation that help the pilot follow and reach that given runway precisely. Let's now display the airport properties with shift enter. Combo box pilot Lucas Hosnidl. Combo box descent map collapse. And let's press tab two times because on the first tab press there's the descend map, which I'll be talking about in a later part of the series. Combo box waypoints collapsed. And here we can see the waypoints for all the runways that are available at this airport. 9A, two kilometers dead ahead. There's 9A, 2 kilometers dead ahead. 9B, 5 kilometers dead ahead. 9C, 10. 9B, 5 kilometers. 9, 9C, 10 kilometers dead ahead. 9C, 9, 9C, 10 kilometers. 9D, 15 kilometers dead ahead. 9D, 15 kilometers dead ahead. 9E, 20 9 kilometers e, dead ahead. 20 kilometers dead ahead. So the waypoint is always called with a number and after that with a letter. The number signifies the runway that it is related to. So the five waypoints that start with 9 belong to the runway 09, which is at 90 degrees. And you can see that the further the letter in the alphabet, the further the distance from that waypoint. So we could add these points into the navigation now. Added to navigation. 9D. Added to navigate. 9C. Added to, na added to 9A. Added to navigation. And this would tell us exactly which way to turn when approaching these runway waypoints, but we just need to remember to pay attention to the order in which we add them to the navigation so that we don't accidentally add the furthest point or the point that's closest to the airport first. And then our plane would keep turning exactly as instructed by these waypoints so that it would make it much easier for us to align ourselves with the specific runway that we've been assigned by the tower, by the controller, um, in time. There are waypoints uh, for all the runways at the airport. 90, 90, 27A, two kilometers so behind. here we can see the points leading to runway 27, 27, which is at 270 degrees. Again, starting with 27A. 27B, 20, 20, 27E, 20 All the way to 27E. And this means that this particular airport actually only has this one runway, 0927, but we have to consider both ends of the runway as uh, a separate set of navigation points, of runway waypoints, depending on which side, which direction we are just approaching the runway from. And obviously the distance to the waypoints is determined in this case not by our location of the plane, but of the distance of the waypoint from where the actual runway begins. So 
point A is always the closest to the beginning of the runway, whereas point E is always the farthest from where the runway starts. So that was it for today. I have shown you all the features that the navigation system has, and I hope that using this navigation system you will always be able to get safely wherever you want to get. And now I'm already going to invite you to listen to part 10 where we'll meet again and we'll be talking about how to start and use the radio and all the frequencies that we can connect to using the radio.